Forecast. I'm Joseph, the host of the UFC Forecast, and we're back for the final predictions and bets for UFC Nashville. And by the way, my mother, she's in the comments, Draft Goon. I made her a YouTube profile so she can comment on my videos because she's always checking them out. And she's actually going to Nashville in six weeks' time. She wants to put some money down this weekend. So let's see how these fighters face off. This is a post-weigh-in face-off show as well. One of the best, most anticipated shows for the forecasters. They really love the final pick show. And my responsibility is to make sure the forecast is accurate and we can entertain. So everybody, go pour a drink. I got the fireball once again. Just getting fucked out. We ain't doing that shit. You guys know I went and got the core to fucking Pink Whitney. Let's get it. Let's have a shot before we get into these face-offs because they're going to be absolutely lit. I haven't watched them yet. And some picks might change. You never know. Like, I've never changed too many picks on the final prediction show. But this week, I feel like I'm going to change a lot. It's a sketchy-ass card. I advise not putting too much money down. But the Patreon members, $5 a month, exclusive and early access. They will have access to all of my bets. I do have $135 down on two fighters. So you have to be on Patreon to find out who that is. And on Discord, I have my props of the week out there. My locks and dogs were out there since Sunday. So join Discord to get early access as well. And there's a few people in the Discord I want to mention. Dreadstocks, his dog of the week's absolutely money. He's never lost a dog of the week yet. And Caesar, his locks and dogs, they're also money. So the community of forecasters are also accurate with their predictions. I hope to see you guys in there as well. Let's get right into these face-offs. First up, we got Corey Sandhagen, Rob Font. It's going to be a banger fight. It's going to stay on the feet, for the most part, in my opinion. And at the face-offs, it's intense. Both fighters know what's at hand here. They need to provide an entertaining fight. And I think Corey Sandhagen is going to get the best of Rob Font in this fight. He's going to be the better striker. He can mix in the takedowns and wrestling. And I think he's going to get it done 100%. He's going to be one of my locks of the week as well. He's nailed down to 128. I see Corey being more accurate. Having more volume in this fight. And I'm thinking Corey can find a finish in this one. He has a lot of different weapons. He has the flying knee, spin and elbow. And the fact that he can mix in the takedowns. He could potentially get a submission here. But I think that would be a long shot. I think it's mostly going to stay on the feet. And Corey Sandhagen's is just going to piece him apart. Definitely a lock play. Safe to parlay as well. Let's get it. And next up we have Jessica Andrade and Tatiana Suarez. And I don't think Andrade is going to last too long against a girl that can take her down pretty easily here. Has four submission wins against champion Alexa Grasso. Former champ Carla Esparza knocked her out in the third round. If she can submit the current champ Alexa Grasso in the very first round, make easy work of her back in the day. She did take four years off, came back, looked pretty good, got the submission in round two against Montella De La Rosa who is definitely a lower level opponent. I see some people going with Andrade as the underdog this week, but... I cannot see it at all, and I'm not wasting my money on it, that's for sure. And next up, we got Dustin Jacoby, Kennedy Nezechiku. And in this fight, Kennedy looks pretty confident. Dustin, he doesn't seem to shy away at all. He's also fairly confident in his abilities. I think it's going to stay on the feet. Kennedy could possibly go for the submission in this one. He is using his grappling. His last three fights are all by finish. But Dustin Jacoby lost his last two fights by decision. I don't know if he's going to get finished. Kennedy Nezechiku could win a decision, but I have my money on the submission. It's like $9 plus $800. So you got to put a little sprinkle on that for sure. His last win was by submission. And Dustin Jacoby probably has some holes in his grappling. Not going to lie, on the feet, he was a glory kickboxer. He has a lot of power. He's pretty technical. He can stay safe for the most part. And last for a decision, I do really like Dustin Jacoby, and I normally have my money on him, but after losing to Khalil Roundtree, man, like, I can't go with this guy at all. And next up, we got Diego Lopez and Gavin Tucker. Gavin Tucker's in Nova Scotia. He's just a couple hours away from me and PEI here. And Diego Lopez has that stupid fucking haircut again. He's going to be a little bit taller than Gavin Tucker, no doubt about it, but I don't think he's going to get the win here, and I don't know why he's the favorite. Gavin Tucker has been away for two years, but... He did pretty good when he was in the UFC. He has four knockouts, six submissions, and only one decision win. This guy's a finisher, and he usually gets the finish. But in this one, I think he's going to get a decision. He's been away for two years, so he might have a little bit of ring rust. But I still think he gets the job done against Diego Lopez. No clue why the line has moved so much. I don't know why he went from 205 to 250. But I'd say grab that underdog money on Gavin Tucker because Diego Lopez's last two wins were against a 12-12 and opponent and a 10-10 and opponent. 
Gavin Tucker's a little bit higher level than those two guys. I can't see for the life of me Diego Lopez getting the job done here, even though he was pulling up some crazy submissions against Mosver Evelev in his last one. He still got taken down and controlled very easily, and he did not look that UFC caliber in my opinion. And next up, we got the other Canadian, Tanner Bozer against Alexa Kamur, and this is the one I wanted to see face off. Kamur has the glasses on. He honestly doesn't look that great. Tanner Bowser is definitely still the pick here. I think Tanner Bowser is going to smoke him in the first round. He wants to get a big W after losing to Kutalaba in the first round in his last one. This is Bulldozer's second fight at 205. He has a lot to prove. And Alexa Kamur has been away for a little bit too long to side with him. And I do see a lot of people taking him as an underdog. The line has moved significantly, but there's no way I'm taking him. He is technical. He is fast. He could potentially get the knockout, but his last knockout was against Fabio Charant. A lot of people might comment, well, Tanner Bozer's last knockout was against Ovin St. Peru. But, like, Tanner Bozer, in my opinion, he's going to storm surge him. I'm calling the storm surge here. Very first round, Tanner Bozer, KO, gets it done. Super biased pick, not going to lie. I'm Canadian, and I'm picking both Canadians on this card, and both Canadians can very well lose, so... Be very smart with what you guys are doing this weekend on your bets. Don't just tail my bets. Hopefully you took your time and did the research this week. And also came here to get some entertainment and see what my picks are. Cheers, everybody. I think we're all going to fare out fairly well in Nashville. We're all smart enough to stay away from the sketchy fights. And in this fight, Ignacio Bahamandez against Ludovic Klein. This is a fight that, you know, I think is sketchy. I don't think Ignacio Bahamandez is $1.44 here. Ignacio is super tall. For the division, he's technical, quick, has unreal kicks. But Ludovic Klein is an absolute dog. He has power in the hands. He can be low volume at times, but his power is pretty significant. I think it could be more significant than Ignacio's hands for sure. But Ignacio has a lot more power in the kicks. He has a spin and wheel kick knockout. Pretty impressive. So Ludovic needs to keep his chin up. Be aware of that. At 275, man, this guy's a dog. But I'm not going to take him as my pick. I see people in the Discord saying Ignacio is a lock this week. And I also had Ignacio since day one when I seen this fight. All week I had Ignacio. I can't change my pick now. I doubt I'm going to change my pick on any of these fights, to be honest with you guys, because, like I said, I do my research. I give my early prediction show, and I usually stick with that. Let's keep wrangling them up on the prelims. Have another drink here first. I'm feeling it. I think we're going to make some money here for sure this week in Nashville. Kyler Phillips, Rayoni Barcelos. Barcelos is a big underdog. These two are ready to go, but Kyler Phillips is quick. Always good in the very first round. And Barcelos' last couple fights, he struggled. He's 36. He's getting old. But he is going to be probably the better grappler here. He can get the takedowns, get the control time. If you do like Rayoni Barcelos, if you think he's going to win, put a little sprinkle on him because he really needs a W. This could be it against Kyler Phillips, who has been unactive. But the kid, Kyler Phillips, is eight years younger. He's going to be a lot faster, and he has a big win over Yadong Song. I think the UFC is going to push him for a W here. And for my prediction, I see this going exactly how Rioni Barcelos lost to Victor Henry. I can just see that going the exact same way, but it's going to be Kyler Phillips instead of Victor Henry getting his hand raised. It's going to play out the exact same way. I'm telling you right now, probably a decision win, but Kyler Phillips... Throws a lot of volume. Could probably find the knockout shot. Not going to lie. He's pretty fast too. Eight years younger. So that's pretty significant. There's no way Rayoni Barcelos is going to be my pick or my bet. I'd advise you guys probably not to put your money on a guy that's eight years older and absorbs five strikes a minute. Probably on his way out of the UFC, let's be honest. And next up, we got my second lock of the week. Jeremiah Wells against Carlson Harris. And I love that this fight has got even closer. This is the only fight that's pretty well a coin flip now. And it's my second lock of the week. He's getting it done 100%. I'm super confident in it. High confidence pick for the Patreon members. And straight up I have here he's going to get it done inside the distance. He has five knockouts, four submissions, and three decision wins. Most recently he had a split decision win against Matt Semlisberger. He got dropped a few times in that fight. But I'm not going to sleep on Jeremiah Wells like everybody else. This guy is an absolute powerhouse. He hits like a truck. One shot and it's lights out for Carlson Harris. I'm going to tell you that right now. And Jeremiah's getting underlooked at this price tag in this fight, man. He won his last six fights. Five of them by finish. Knocked out Court McGee. Knockout punch. First round. And he also submitted Blood Diamond very easily. So wherever this fight goes, I think he's going to get the job done by finish here. Carlson Harris isn't even fucking looking at him. He has a hat on sideways like an idiot. 
And he's not too bad anywheres, but he's not too good anywheres either. He has five knockouts, five submissions, but his last knockout was to Impa Kasaganai, who's fighting in the PFL right now, like already cut from the UFC. I don't think he has much value in that one there. So I do not see Carlson Harris getting a knockout shot against my boy Jeremiah Wells. Lock it in, great value. So we got one lock that's low value and one lock that's high value, and I see both of them cashing 100% with ease. And next up, we got my underdog of the week, Damon Jackson. And th these boys are fists up, ready to go. This is the first one that they're actually ready to fucking fight. Damon Jackson, you know, he respects Billy Q. And I really think Damon Jackson's going to get this done. He's my most confident underdog this week. And Billy Q got knocked out three months ago. This is a quick turnaround for him. Jackson had since January to recover since the Dan Iggy knockout. I know he got knocked out pretty bad in that one, and he got knocked out bad against Ilya Taporia. But does Billy Q have the power of those two guys? I don't fucking think so. I think Billy Q is questionable on the ground. He gets taken down a lot. Damon Jackson can get those takedowns. He can get that submission. And if he doesn't want to get the submission, he can get the ground and pound just like he did against Pat Sabatini. This is another fight where I can see the storm surge. And not going to lie, at the start of the week, I was going to go Billy Q because he's been win-loss. For the last six fights, he's due for the win. So that's kind of sketchy. And all three of his last wins were by knockout. And Damon Jackson has been knocked out in his two losses in the UFC because he's 5-2 and two in the UFC. And like I mentioned, other than that knockout loss to Dan Iggy and Ilya Taporia, Damon Jackson's been really good, man. Five wins, three finishes, a big win over Dan Argueta by decision and Charles Rosa by decision. I see Damon Jackson getting this one done. That's what's in the forecast, and hopefully he makes it rain. And next up, we got Cody Durden, the people's underdog, against Jake Hadley, who's talking a lot, and Cody Durden's talking a lot, too. This one's going to be a banger. So many people going with Cody Durden as underdog of the week. I could not make him my underdog of the week. Even though I was pretty confident in him, just like everyone else, I had to dig into Jake Hadley and figure out, like, why is everybody going Cody Durden? Like, how can Jake Hadley win this fight? He's obviously the favorite for a reason, right? So he has good hands as well. He can mix in the body shots, potentially find a liver shot here against Cody Durden, who isn't even that great on the feet. So like Jake Hadley's totally live for a knockout in this fight. That's why I didn't put any money on Cody Durden. I mean, the face-off was intense. He could go either way on this one, but it's not price close. Cody Durden is a pretty sizable underdog here, and there's lots of value in him. So he kind of has to be the pick for the sake of the show. But after the face-off, man, like, I, got, I gotta go with that Jake Hadley, man. I'm gonna switch the pick, Jake Hadley. He's gonna get the finish on Cody Durden. I think everybody's a little bit too high on Cody Durden this week, and he's gonna steal some money from people. And next up, we have a short notice opponent for Sean Woodson, and he is a lot shorter than Sean Woodson as well. Dennis Bajukja. And this guy, I don't see getting the job done, you know. He's fighting on the regional scene, just stepping up here short notice. Great opportunity for him. Sean Woodson, absolute sniper. He had that big flying knee knockout against Terrence McKinney on the Dana White Contender Series. This guy's probably looking for another highlight reel knockout against a low-level opponent on short notice here. Sean Woodson's definitely the play. The sniper's going to snipe, and he's high volume, five strikes a minute. After that draw, he's going to get all the wrinkles out here. And next up, we got Ode Osborne, 250 underdog now. He's growing against Asu Alambayev. Alambayev's good, man. He's relentless. He's going to go for those takedowns, slam takedowns. And at the end of the day, yes, this is a tricky debut for Asu, but... He fought Tagir Ulenbekov, lost in the third round by knockout there. His other loss was a split decision. This is definitely a winnable fight. If it goes the distance, I can see the judges giving it to Asu and everybody else thinking Ode won it, right? Just like the last time, Azat Maxim beat Tyson Nam. Like, I thought Tyson Nam won that fight, and they gave it to Azat. So the Kazakhstan prospects are on the rise. I assume this one's going to get it done. He's going to stay my pick. But no shame in taking Ode Osborne in this spot. I see a lot of credible people taking them. And on the forecast forensic, I have Ode Osborne for a decision. It's $7 on Betway. So in my opinion, $7 is great value because he has a decision win over Charles Johnson and CJ Vergara. If Ode is going to win this fight, I'm calling the decision win for him. If Asu wins this fight, I'm honestly going to call the decision too. So let's bet the over 1.5. Cross our fingers this Kazakhstan prospect doesn't get an early finish here. And next up, it's time for the locks and dogs of the week. And last time on the early prediction show, I completely forgot to do my dog of the week. So I'll start with my dog of the week. Once again, it's going to be Damon Jackson, 250. I see him getting it done against Billy Q. Damon Jackson is a savage in that octagon. 
His only two losses in the UFC were both by knockout. I don't think Billy Q is going to get the knockout in this one. So that means Damon Jackson is going to get the dub. And next up for the locks of the week, I'm going with Corey Sandhagen, minus 300. And Jeremiah Wells, minus 175. But now Jeremiah Wells is more valuable than that. Those are just the prices I locked them in at. I see both these guys winning with 100% ease. And if you guys heard me at the start of the show, I'm putting $135 down on two fighters. And it's definitely not these two fighters. And next up, it's time for the props of the week. Let's get it. This is not over. And for my lock prop, not going to lie, it's going to be Jeremiah Wells by finish, plus 150. Great value for the finish there, even though his last fight was a decision. I think he's going to get things sorted out in this one and wrangle up a big finish in Nashville. And next up for the value prop of the week, we're going to throw Kennedy Nezechiku by submission there, $9.00. One of the most valuable value props I ever gave out. And that's a big forecast play there. Submission for Kennedy Nezechiku only has the one submission win in his last fight. I'm going to call it back-to-back -back sub wins for Kennedy Nezechiku. And my other value prop I posted for everybody on Instagram and Twitter. So make sure you check out the UFC forecast. Give us a follow. Like our content. Really appreciate that support. This value prop was $3 plus 200. Fight under 1.5 and it's Tanner Bozer. And Alexa Kamur, I see this one going under 1.5. Tanner Bozer just had an embarrassing knockout loss. I believe he's going to come out there and try to go for the storm surge. And Alexa Kamur has been off for two years, so he probably wants to get a big win here, get a bonus. Kamur does have a pretty diverse set of weapons. I could see him getting the knockout or Tanner Bozer getting the knockout, but it's going to be under 1.5. I'm forecasting that these light heavyweights are looking for that 50k bonus. And now it's time for the underdog prop of the week. The last underdog prop and if you want access to the props early just join discord absolutely free we have a great community going and growing right now and my underdog prop was damon jackson by finish plus 300 four dollars damon jackson is going to dominate this fight and just to be safe i bet him by money line in case he wins that decision too so i'm potentially going to lose some money on damon jackson but i'm going to ride with him i believe in him his only two losses were to Ilya Taporia and dan iggy so, Billy Q does not have that kind of power. Damon Jackson is a fucking savage and he's going to get this one done. I can't wait. Thank you everyone for tuning in for the final prediction show, post weigh-in face-off show. We kept it entertaining. We took one shot, but we're going to save it for the fights because normally I drink way too much on the show and someone in the comments section said I need to drink a little bit more water, so... I'm going to go rehydrate with some water right now. Probably go play some more bets for those Patreon members that are paying me $5 a month. Have to update my platinum picks because I just switched to Jake Hadley instead of Cody Durden. I think a lot of people are going to lose some money on Cody Durden. Calling that right now, but we'll see. Also going to try to snipe Kennedy Nezechiku by submission. It's going to be a pretty fun card here in Nashville. Have $135 on two fights, so hopefully I win that. Don't want to lose any money this week, especially not $135. Let's keep it rocking and rolling in Nashville. And on the last two cards, I only predicted two fights wrong, so I'm saddled up and I'm going to keep her going.